Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem maximum sum circular subarray. It's pretty similar to leak code 53, which I already have a solution on, which is the maximum subarray sum problem. This is pretty similar, just a slight variation, which is that instead of being given a straightforward array, we're given a circular array, which basically means that the end is connected to the beginning. And in the context of this problem, we're looking for the maximum possible subarray of this array could be like something like this that has the maximum sum that we can possibly get from the input array. The interesting thing with this problem though is that since it is a circular array, our maximum subarray sum does not necessarily need to look like this. We can actually have a more interesting one that looks like this, maybe a portion of the ending of the array and then we circle back and then get a portion of of the beginning of the array and we say this is our maximum subarray sum. So that's the interesting part of this problem. It can get kind of tricky, especially with a few of the edge cases, but I'll show you a pretty clean way to write it and I'll explain my thought process as well. So as I said, there are two possibilities that the maximum subarray sum could be a straightforward one where it's just kind of in the middle of the array or it could be that we need a portion of the ending of the array and the beginning of the array. We definitely don't know which choice it's going to be until we actually do it. So we kind of have to try both ways. The good thing is that the middle approach is pretty straightforward. It's just like leak code 53. So we can kind of just use the exact same ideas, which is Cadane's algorithm. I think this is a simple enough algorithm though that you don't really have to care about who it's named after. The idea is that we want to be greedy as possible. What we're gonna do is iterate value by value and we're gonna keep track of two things. We're gonna keep track of our current maximum so far. So that means when we get to this value, we wanna know what's the maximum subarray sum including this value, that's our current maximum. And when we get to the second value, we wanna know what's the maximum subarray sum we can get including this value. We may or may not include the previous value, but we also but we do want to include this value. And we're going to keep updating our current maximum, but what we're ultimately trying to find is that global maximum. So we're going to continuously be updating our global maximum using our current maximum, and that's pretty much the main idea. So a quick example run would look like this. We'll initially set our current maximum equal to zero, but we're gonna set our global maximum equal to just the first value because there's an edge case where if we initially set this to zero, normally we're only gonna update the global maximum when we find a value greater than what the current value is, but if we initialize it to zero, what about if every value in the input array was negative? We'd have this. So what would be the maximum subarray sum in this example? It'd probably just be negative one because we can't take an empty subarray. We have to choose one. So we just choose this like the greatest value, which is still a negative value, negative one. But if we initialize our global max to zero, we're going to end up returning zero, which is not correct. So an easy way to get around this is just to set the global max initially to any value in the array. I'm just going to arbitrarily choose the first one, but you could choose the last one. You could choose a middle value. It doesn't matter because we know for sure that the global maximum can't possibly be less than negative one or any value in this array. It can't possibly be less than any of them. So we're going to initialize our global maximum to negative one, or actually in this case, positive one, because that's our actual example. And now continuing through, we will get to the first value. We want to update our current sum with it. We have two choices. Initially, since it's just the first value, we're just going to take our current sum and then add one to it. So now our current sum is one. We're going to try to update our global maximum, but it's already one, so nothing to do here. Then we're going to get to the second value here. Now we actually have a choice though. We can say that either this is the maximum uh, subarray sum so far, the first two values, or we can just include this value and skip the previous value. What do you think we should do? Well, it depends what leads to a greater current sum. We can say one minus two is negative one. That's if we include both of them, adding the negative here. Or if we just take the negative two, which one of these two is greater? Probably the negative one. So we're gonna say this is our maximum current sum so far, which is negative one. So we're gonna say our current sum now is negative one. We can't update our global maximum because we still don't have a greater value than it. And this is kind of how it's gonna go. Now we're gonna get to a three. So we can say three 
plus negative one, which is positive two, or we can skip all previous values and say this is our current uh, max sum so far. And it is because three is definitely greater than two. So we say this is our current sum now. Our current sum is three, and we can actually update our global maximum to three now. And then we're gonna get to the negative two. We're gonna see that we have two choices. We can say our current sum minus two, which is uh, positive one, or we can just take this value itself and ignore the previous ones. That would be negative two. Which one of these is greater? Positive one. So we say our current sum now is positive one, but we still can't update our global maximum, which is three. We went through the entire array, but notice how the way we did it, we only considered subarrays that are in the middle of the array. It could be like this, it could be like this, but we did not include the case where we can start at the end and then reverse all the way to the front and then say that this is our subarray. We just did the basic Cadenz algorithm. So how do we handle this additional case? Well, the intuition is this. We know that if this is our maximum subarray sum, then the rest of everything is the minimum subarray sum. Because remember, this is a circular array. So this and this is technically a continuous subarray. And we know that this is going to be the minimum continuous subarray. But we don't know for sure that this is the maximum subarray sum because we haven't actually considered these circular uh, contiguous subarrays. But the point I'm getting at is that if we actually also keep track of the current minimum and the global minimum contiguous subarray, the ones that actually go through the middle, if we can find the middle contiguous minimum subarray sum, like suppose it is this, then we know for sure that the remaining portion is going to be the maximum subarray sum. So instead of us trying to do this a complicated way where we actually have to loop all the way around and consider the circular subarrays, we just take the middle contiguous minimum subarray and then we'll be able to sum that up and we'll have the total of the array as well. And we'll be able to take the total subtracted by the global minimum and this will get us to a possible solution. This won't necessarily be the solution, but it'll either be this or it will be the global maximum, which we're also computing. So we'll be able to take the maximum of these two and then return that. Now in this example, we're not actually gonna get that because the maximum subarray sum in this case is actually three. So I'm gonna try this second example, which is a bit more interesting. So we're gonna initialize our current and global max. With the global max, remember, we're just gonna take the first value arbitrarily. Same with current minimum. Well, current minimum, we're also gonna initialize to zero, just like current maximum. Global minimum, we're just gonna arbitrarily take a value, five. And now we're gonna run the algorithm. We're going to go value by value, updating both of these at this point. So we're trying to update the current maximum, which in this case is just gonna end up being five and updating the current minimum, which is also gonna be five because we're forced to include every value that we end up visiting at the point because we're trying to find this subarray sum. So this is gonna be five and we're not gonna update the global min or maximum, but now let's go to the second value, negative three. We want to update the current maximum. We can either say negative three and five, which is gonna be positive two when you add them together, or we can just take negative three by itself. Which one of those is greater? Probably the positive two. So we're gonna update our current maximum to be positive two. Can we update the global maximum with that? Nope. Now with current minimum, it's gonna be kind of the opposite where we can take both of these together, which again is positive two, or we can take this by itself, which is negative three. Which one is smaller? Negative three. So we take current maximum, set it to negative three. Can we update the global minimum? Yes, we can. We're gonna uh, set it to negative three now because that's what the current minimum is. Now going to the last value, let's try to update the uh, current maximum. So we can take five by itself or we can take five with the previous current maximum sum, which was two. Five plus two is larger than five, which is seven. So we're gonna take the current maximum and set it to seven, can we update the global maximum now? Yep, seven is greater than five, so set this to seven. Do the same thing for the minimums, five plus the current minimum subarray sum, negative three is gonna be a positive two, or we can take five by itself. Which one of those is smaller? 
positive two. So we take current minimum and set it to positive two, though our global minimum is gonna stay the same because the negative three is still smaller than positive two. Okay, now we are done. So my question to you is what is the solution? And actually there's one other thing I didn't show. We could take the entire sum of the subarray at the end, or we could do it as we're iterating through the array. We might as well do it as we're iterating through the array to save time. So what would the total sum of this be? Five plus five, minus three is gonna be seven. So our total is equal to seven. So again, what is our solution now? Well, it's possibly the global max. If it's the global max, then we know it was a array that ran through the middle of the input array. It could have been this, or it could have been that. And the way we got to seven was by basically taking the entire input array. Now, the other case though, is where we had like a circular array where we actually had to go all the way around. How would we get the sum of that? Well, we're gonna take the total subtracted by the global minimum. What's that gonna be? Well, seven minus negative three is actually gonna be seven plus three. So this is gonna be positive 10. What would that uh, array actually look like? Well, it would have been this one where we take the last five and the first five and we choose to not include the middle value. As you can see, this does indeed sum up to 10. So that is going to be our solution for this problem. And that's exactly what we're gonna return. Now there's one last edge case that's very, very easy to miss. The good thing is that leak code kind of hints to you at it because the third example that I'm not showing here is basically gonna tell you if you have this bug or not. But the problem is what if all of these are negative? So if I have a negative five here and a negative five here, well, what's the total of that gonna be? That's gonna be negative 13. What would the global minimum have been in that case? Well, to get a small value, we just take every single one of these negative values. Why would we skip any of them? So the global minimum in that case is going to be negative 13 as well. What would the global maximum be in that case? Probably just negative three. We're gonna take the highest individual element in that case if they're all negative. So the global max would have been negative three in that case. Now, how would we have computed the total? We would have compared the global max, which is negative three, with the total minus the global minimum. Negative 13 minus negative 13 is gonna be equal to zero. So what's greater, zero or negative three? Well, of course it's gonna be zero, so that's what we would end up returning, but that's a problem here. How can we create a subarray from this with a total sum of zero? It's impossible because we're not allowed to take an empty subarray. So what we're learning here is that there's an edge case that we have to handle, which is that what if every value in the input array is negative? In that case, we would have the wrong answer. It would only happen if every value is negative because if we had at least one positive value, for example, a positive one at the beginning, then our global max would have been positive one and taking our total minus the global min probably would have still been zero, but obviously zero, uh, one is greater than zero. So we'd end up returning the correct value here. So the only time we have to handle this is that if every value in the input array is negative, the easiest way to actually code this up though is by saying, or rather checking if our global max is a negative value. Because if it's a negative value, then we know for sure there wasn't a single positive value here. Because if it was, we would have assigned our global maximum to that positive value. So we're gonna say if global max is less than zero, then instead of doing the calculation with total minus the global minimum, because we know that's gonna give us a wrong answer of zero, instead of doing that, we're just gonna take the highest individual element, which we know our global max is going to tell us. So we're gonna return that negative a three which is what we would want to do. I understand that this last part is probably the most confusing. So if I were you and this is confusing to you, I would spend a couple extra seconds or minutes trying to run through the example. That's the best way to understand it. Run through an example with all negative values and see what is the solution. Try running it for a second example and then you'll probably pick up the pattern. But overall, since we are only having to iterate through the entire input array, we're not doing nested loops or anything like that, we can say the time complexity is gonna be big O of N. The memory complexity is going to be constant constant because yes, we have a bunch of variables, but we don't have arrays. We're not allocating extra arrays or hash maps or anything. So now let's code it up. I just initialized our global max and global min and current max and current min and our total just so I could save a bit of time. But it's basically just as I mentioned in the drawing explanation. So now we're going to iterate through every value in the input array. So for n in nums, the first thing we might want to do is update our current maximum. Do you remember how we're going to do that? Well, we want to 
obviously maximize it, but how are we gonna do that? We can take our current maximum and add n to it. That's a possibility, but it's possible that the value n itself could be larger. And we know no matter what, we have to include n. So we're either gonna say current max plus n, or we're just gonna take n by itself. And I'm gonna copy and paste this because it's gonna be pretty similar with the current minimum, except kind of the opposite, where instead of the current max, we're gonna obviously look at the current minimum and we're gonna update the current minimum as well. And instead of finding the maximum of these two values, we want to actually find the minimum of them. The easy part is just updating our total. So no matter what n is, we're gonna add it to our total. And then comes updating the global max and global minimum. This is also pretty straightforward. The global max is just gonna be the max of itself or possibly the current maximum value. Same with global minimum. We're going to take the minimum of itself and the current minimum. And then finally, when it's time to return, remember the naive thing to do would be to say, take the maximum of the global max and the total minus the global minimum that would be the naive thing to do and i just realized i've been referring to my global min and max as the wrong thing they shouldn't have an extra al just to keep things a little bit short let me clean that up but yeah this would be the naive way to do it but we know that there is a case where we're not going to do that we are going to return this value if the global maximum is greater than zero because we know there was at least one positive value in the input array. But if there wasn't at least one positive value in the input array, we know that the, probably the maximum is gonna be whatever the individual largest negative value was largest as in closest to being a positive value. So in that case, we would just return global max and we don't need that extra AL. If this part is confusing you, please feel free to ask in the comments, but now let's run the code to make sure that it works. And as you can see, yes, it does. And it's pretty efficient. If this was helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. It has a ton of free resources to help you prepare. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon.